And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up listening to Half a King. Uh, this is part of the Shattered Sea series by the one and only Joe Abercrombie. And I want to give my unedited thoughts upon finishing the book, which was just now. So I liked this book. This is a four out of five stars. And this review is going to sound like a negative review. But I did not have negative views of this book. But I was frustrated by a lot of this book, mostly because of who the author is. And I think a lot of people are probably going to share this perspective. I have not read the reviews of this book, but I think a lot of people are going to say exactly what I have to say. Because I read this book because I love The First Law, a book series that is immensely popular in the fantasy realm. And if you have not read it, stop everything you're doing. Don't even finish this review. Go read the entire First Law series. You will thoroughly enjoy yourself. I almost guarantee it. But Joe Abercrombie is one of my favorite authors. It's probably like top three favorite authors for me. And the first law is like top three favorite series for me. And I kept judging this book based on the standard that I felt was set by the first law. And this book just was not anywhere close to the quality that the first law was. And it's, it, it starts off really bad and gets progressively better throughout the book to the point where it's, it's quite good by the end of it. But Man, it's just hard to read this book for what it is on its own. And I think that's just, I have a lot of bias going into this book. And I, I honestly thought that this book was what Joe Abercrombie wrote before he wrote The First Law. Because it's just, the quality is just not as good. But I find out that he actually wrote the, the First Law trilogy, the first one, before he wrote this. And so that was even more frustrating to me when I realized that. And I realized that partway through this book. And it was like a real head scratcher for me. It's like... What happened? I, I, I don't get it. I still don't get it because it's, it's just not as good. So good, not incredible. So let's go down the various parts of this story so I can tell you what I liked, what I didn't like about the various aspects of this book. So let's start with the story. And the story is okay. It's a three out of five. Like I said, the beginning is really, really bad. It is extremely vanilla and completely predictable. Now, I don't want to say what happens because I do think that there's quite a few people that will will probably be a little bit surprised by this. And there are probably people that aren't like super fantasy fans, but something happens really early on in the book. And it was very obvious for me what was going to happen. And I don't mind when a, a twist doesn't work. And it's not so much that. It just is so plain and a bland story. And there's like a bit of thousand fantasy stories that have been written with this essential plot, it's just so decent and just not impressive. Now, the middle of the book was okay. It got a little bit better, but again, it's a revenge story. And, you know, I've read a thousand revenge stories. This is not one of the better ones. So just, it's so, so, you know, it's this kid kind of a growing of age story. Almost kind of reads like a YA book, although there is some brutality to it. Uh, but very basic in the way that it's written. And he wants to try to get to that conclusion by the end of the book of this revenge plot. And, but I will say that the ending saved this book. The ending was amazing. The ending finally felt like the Joe Abercrombie that I know and love. There were multiple twists that completely blindsided me that I enjoyed thoroughly. The, the hallmark of a good twist to me is when A, I didn't see it coming, and B, it felt deserved. You know, I don't want something just coming completely out of the blue for the sake of making me not see it coming. I want something that I kind of should have seen coming. The hints were there all the way. You know, and, and think about like a Brandon Sanderson for this. He is a master at this because he writes these twists and you, you could have seen it coming the entire time, but you just didn't, you know, but he, but he put it all out there for you. And that's what this twist was. And very masterfully done, and I applaud him. Now, it was it was a struggle getting to that point. It does leave me really excited to read the second book, though. Now, if this was the other way around, and the book started hot and ended cold, I wouldn't be looking forward to that next book. But I've always said that I love a good progression. I don't mind if a book starts bad. I want it to end really good, and that's what this book did. Now, it really is like the very end of this book that gets good for me. Um, it wasn't like the last third of it. It's the last, you know... 20, 30 pages. I don't know what the page count is because I listen to it on audiobook, but it's the very end of the book and that's when it really pops off. So 
Let's move over to the world building. And the world building itself, I'll give another three out of five. It's okay. It's mediocre. You've read a world like this a thousand times. It doesn't reinvent the genre. It doesn't do anything super special. And as soon as I'm done now, I'm not really going to be thinking about this world again. I'm not going to be gushing about it. You know, it is well written in the sense that everything was well described. I could see the world um, from my eyes as I'm reading along with this. I'm not a super visual reader, and I really could visualize everything that was going on. The set pieces, the battle sequences were very well done. Um, but yeah, it's just okay. Nothing really to write home about, but yeah, it is what it is. So the fantasy elements, and this is the worst fantasy element score I've ever given, and I'm gonna give this a one out of five. Not because it was written bad, but because there really was no fantasy elements in this book other than it's a made-up world. There's no magic. There's no mythical beasts. There's no progression. There's no anything. You know, if this was written on Earth, it would not be a fantasy book. There'd be nothing at all fantasy about it. Now, that's, that's what the author was trying to do. You know, he, he wasn't trying to write a book with heavy fantasy elements. In fact, the first law, while it does clearly have some fantasy elements, it does not rely on those elements to tell the story that it does. You know, there's no dragons flying around. You know, there is some, some magic users, not a lot. Um, there is some mysterious aspects to a couple of the characters that use superhuman type of things, but not a lot. It's a plot story and a character story, and that's what it excels at. And that's how people love it. And but this one took it to the umpteenth degree. And, you know, if you're going to write a fantasy book in a fantasy world, having some cool magic to go along with it wouldn't hurt your story. You know, in fact, I think it would have made it a little better here. I don't need some intricate, you know, crazy magic system that's well developed and well explained, but something in there to keep the story a little more fresh. Um, but yeah, just doesn't exist in this book. It's not what it is. So. Now the characters, and this is where I'm really disappointed because I'm gonna give this a three out of five and I'm disappointed because I consider Joe Abercrombie one of the best character writers in all of fantasy. Um, in fact, all of fiction, but they're just bland. You know, Prince Yarvi is the best written character. He's the main character and where everything is from his point of view. But yeah, he's just a, a normal, not normal. You know, he does have some differences to him that I don't want to explain. For, for this is a very spoiler free review. But his thought processes were very average, you know, nothing extraordinary. Now, this would be excused for me if the character really developed throughout the story, but there was no development that happened in the story. The Prince Yarvi that you meet on page one is the same Prince Yarvi you meet at the end of the book. He's the same exact guy, and I don't love that. I want a character that's going to take some depth to him. Or, if it's going to be the same, at least make him really interesting. You know, this is not a Sand and Glotta. You're not going to get some incredibly compelling character that's got this, you know, deep sarcasm and hilarity to them and viciousness to them. and something that really stands out. Uh, that's not who this is. It's a YA character that you've read about a thousand times. So, kind of weak and confused about why Joe Abercrombie didn't write this in a little bit different way. You know, the side characters were, were similar to pedestrian. You know, there is one side character, and I'm not going to say who it is because I really don't want to spoil anything, that is well written and does develop throughout the story and does kind of, you know, I'm not going to say anything more than that. I'm not even going to say who it is. But aside from that one character, yeah, that's not what this book is. But what this book is. And the last area that I judge my books on is the writing style. And this is a five out of five, an easy five out of five. Joe Abercrombie is a wonderful writer. You know, he does not have to tell a compelling plot with amazing characters to make me really dig the way that he writes. It's, I constantly have a smile on my face, just the way that he pieces his sentences together. I love him. I love the way that he writes. And, you know, I wish that he was just, this crazy prolific writer that had this Brandon Sanderson type of volume output, um, he doesn't. He takes a little bit more time to write his books. He, you know, when he gets in the groove, he seems like he pops them off. You know, he had a, several of the first law books came out kind of back to back. But, you know, it's just I wish he would just write because it's so good. It's it's like a six out of five. But that's one of the reasons that he's one of my favorite authors because he writes so dang well. So. 
All in all, I would recommend this book, but I would put some cautions to it. One of them being, don't judge it against the first law, especially if you're a big first law fan. Let it be its own thing. I think you'll enjoy it more. Um, also, don't give up on it. Know that the ending does come through in such a good way that I think it will set up the rest of the series in a very good way. I have pretty high optimism that the next book is going to be quite good. Now, I don't completely know where this next story is going to go because I think you could read this book as an isolated book. It does have an ending. I'm curious where this next story is going to go, but I have faith that Joe Abercrombie knows what he's doing and he has a destination going to go. He does end his stories and his series overall in an incredibly good way. I'm going to do a video at some point in the future about my favorite series endings of all time. And both of Abercrombie's First Law trilogies are going to be rather high on that list. He knows how to end a story. And not a lot of people love it. I'm sure actually a lot of people love it. But a lot of people dislike it because they're not always uh, that fairy tale ending. They oftentimes have a grim ending. And I hope that's what this story is, because that's what I buy in for when I get an Abercrombie book. I don't want the same old run-of-the-mill story. I want something new, and I, want, I don't mind being disappointed from a happiness perspective. I don't need to be happy reading a book. I, there's plenty of books on my shelves that I can read to, have it, you know, to end with this totally at peace feeling about myself. But no, Joe, do your own thing. I hope you surprise me. Hope the next book kills it. And if you're watching this, pick up this book. It's a good read. So that's my review. Hope you'd enjoyed it and happy reading to you.